This might sound a bit heretical, but a wild camp for me is not really all about the views. I'd much rather camp where I can get a sense of the history of a place. So I'd rather camp um, like an abandoned farmhouse or an old Roman fort or a stone circle or something. And I think if you want to get a sense of history and how folk lived in the past, then I don't think there's any better place you can do that than coming to stay in Bothies. I think it's part of the attraction for me. Hi folks, it's Graham here. I've been lucky enough to get myself out on another little adventure. We're in southwest Scotland and the idea is that we check out and explore some of the bothies in the area. So we're hoping to hike the green section, and have a brew there and then, but then spend tonight at Driffhead Bothy. Then on the second night we're going to try and make it over Four Hope and then finally we'll stay at Brattleburn with any luck. But obviously these plans are always changeable so who knows where we'll end up. I don't want to have two fine gentlemen accompany me, but instead I've got Silky Nick and Sean P. Two fine gents indeed, actually. The valley here is beautiful and I have to say it's very reminiscent of uh, the Cheviot valleys that I'm more familiar with. And I think we've just caught sight of a gable end of a building in those trees right over there. So I reckon that's got to be the Bothy. We can see the Bothy through the trees now. Just a hundred yards away. And it looks like this bothy's got a netty just over there. This is the left hand room, it's so keen Nick, and there's a fire here as well, it's all wood panelled so I imagine it'll be pretty warm once yeah. you get the stove going. Yeah. A few supplies on the wall behind Nick there. And this is the, the right hand room, you've got a cracking kitchen area here, what a bothy. You've even got a, a bottle opener here. Almost empty gas. It's, they're always almost empty, aren't they? A bit of popcorn. I don't think I would trust a bothy egg. A few pans. Great little kitchen area, this. And looks like a cracking stove in the middle here. Somebody's been kind enough to cut some wood. A bunch of fire lighters, some tea lights. The history of Green Sykes. It's got a list of the folk that have lived here and the parish records and stuff. This is really interesting. What a great find. It's almost a shame that we're not stopping here. We've just popped in to have a look at the place and have a brew. I'm going to be moving on to Driffhead Bothy, but I'm well impressed. This is a lovely little place. I think it's one of the nicest Bothies I've been in. So it's, it's half past nine folks, but I'm absolutely starving. Uh, I've been up since half past four. So this is a very, very early dinner. I'm having a reduced Morrison sausage roll with some bothy brown sauce on it. And Sean suggested we'd be like hobbits today and have a second breakfast. So yes, to second breakfast. 
turns out my sausage roll was a cheese pasty, but I'm not unhappy with that. Hi folks, so we're on the way to Drifthead Bothy now. We parked the car at near Waterhead Cottage. We met a nice woman leading a horse who told us where the best place to park was. And uh, it's turning out to be a really beautiful day. So the lady leading the horse who told her where to park had a nice pom-pom hat on and we've just found the pom-pom hat lying in the path by itself so I've put it in my rucksack and we're going to give her it back because I can see her walking towards us again now still leading the horse but apparently the horse doesn't like rucksacks Sean's just told me so we're going to have to be careful yeah I didn't video the lady and the hat and the horse because there's a route of video strangers you'll just have to take me word that she did exist most of the way so far has been on this wide vehicle track through the forest and it's paralleled on both sides by these telegraph poles which I assume are for the, the benefit of the farm overhead. I think it's Finnegill Farm or Finnegill Farmers. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Two lads have walked ahead now and I'm by myself. I tend to drop back a bit because of filming and all that. And, uh, it's just really peaceful now and it's absolutely glorious up here. After walking through the forest for a bit, just the views really opened up and it's, uh, it's just great to be out. see the farm through the trees now so we're getting close to the Bothy probably just two or three kilometers away but there's apparently a couple of river crossings before you get to the Bothy and it's making me a bit nervous because uh, it's going to be quite difficult if it's in spate and there's been a lot of rain recently and uh, the little burn here which I think is the the drift head is uh, or drift water is uh, is running quite fast five minutes in that before we get to the Bothy. Uh, I say stale but actually I don't think they're called stales in uh, this part of the universe. I think they're called beetles or fangs. I can't remember which one. Five minutes in the other then? Yeah. This is the bit where we've got a ford and uh, it is running quite fast and deep so the lads are going to look for see if there's an easier, easier crossing. There, there won't be, there never is. We'll come back to here I'm sure. But I think if we throw the rucksacks over and then take a running leap and at least you'll get to the shallow bit before gravity gets here. you, you'll still get wet like. barefooted Now. Oh. Really painful now. 
Oh, right, I'll stop whinging, lads. We'll have me through the same. <laughs> I'm really glad that river crossing is over. My feet are tingling now. I just want to get to that buffy and get warmed up a little bit. There's a nice table and chairs here, just outside the buffy. And here's our shelter for the night. What oh, a welcome sight. Drift head. Well, let's have a look inside this bothy. The left-hand room, there's a nice, uh, nice table here, and there's a sleeping platform to the left, and a very sensible first aid box. There are my mittens there, and it's got a, a beautiful chair fit for a gentleman at a Victorian smoking club. Nice, and it's got a stove here, which, which is gloriously, it's, it's got a good wood supply there. And there's a little painted uh, picture of the Bothy on a, a rock here, that's lovely isn't it? Do you like that? Handy bit of power cord. And this is like a little a little food preparation area. And I have, someone's left a quite beautiful cafetiere actually, I like that. Another sleeping platform there. There's a middle room as well. And the middle room is just a nice, clean sleeping area. Smashing. When I saw these glasses, uh, I had a bit of a conniption. I thought, how did my glasses get here before I did? Can you see what I mean though? They're pretty similar. And the right hand room is currently occupied by a, a pair of scurrilous rascals. And there's rascal number one and rascal number two. As Silky Nick said, it's got these beautiful uh, new blonde wood bunks in. He says it smells like a finished sauna and Nick's been everywhere and done everything so he wouldn't know what a finished sauna smells like but yeah this is great as well and it's got an open fire and something written on the bunk there. What does that say? I went for a walk in the woods and came out taller than the trees. I don't think that's literal I think it's Met a, a met a metaphorical about the healing power of nature. You come out feeling a, a million times better. And I don't know who's done this, but there is wood, dry wood stacked under this bunk, and dry wood stacked under this bunk as well. So whoever's done that, a gentleman. It's a note here. Enjoy your wood, dirty Mike and the boys. I never thought I'd be thanking someone called Dirty Mike, but Dirty Mike, what a gent. He's alright as Dirty Mike. I'll shake his hand if ever I find him. And there's a little shelf here with naturally empty bottles of booze and a few books. I always like seeing books in a buffy because it is a sign of, you know, civilization in the wilderness to come in, light the fire and leaf through a book. Fantastic. What a proper gem of a place this this is. It's great. What a bothy. And uh, after that river crossing, get my feet wet. And I've walked a canny way today. We've done about 16, 17 miles all told. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot. And it's not a lot for younger folk. And um, Emma Ems would walk twice that before breakfast in the Cheviots. But uh, it's a long way for an old man with short legs. So I'm really pleased to be here. And it uh, looks like it's going to be a, a great night. According to the Mountain Bothy Association website, Druffer is a, a Norse or Scandinavian personal name, um, hence the, the name of the water, Drift Water and Drifthead Bothy. So Druffer back in the day must have been a, a bit of a player around these parts. Wet boots off, dry socks and tent boots on. 
things are starting to get a bit cosy in here now. The fire's on. I've got me uh, me slightly damp socks airing off above there. I've got my, my tent boots and my dry socks on. And this is the little place I'm sleeping tonight. Well, I'm very likely sleeping here unless a bunch of lunatics comes in, in which case I'll uh, I'll pitch my tent outside. I've got the Fian Gokota with me. But I've got my expert mount there with my mountain hardware fountain flame bag on top. And this is a great little design because I've even got my own little personal shelf there. Gonna be a cosy night there. Looking forward to it. Cheers everyone, nice hot chocolate. Oh it is hot and all. Well hello folks and welcome to Graham's beer review. We've got one beer each and uh, I didn't actually bring a beer in. This beer was in the bothy already and I'm quite liking the look of it because the chap on the front seems to be wearing Shepherd's plaid or, or Northumbrian tartan. It's called Madri, so let's give this a go. I'm getting a whisper of eternity. The voices of my ancestors and the sun rising on an ancient Serengeti plain at the dawn of humankind. And onions. It's nice, would recommend. Cunningham, McFarlane and McKinney worked the hills around this area during the 1800s. During the Great Freeze of 1887, the three men sheltered here for three months alongside their cattle. The men are buried close to the bridge of Orkey. Morning folks, had a bit of a weird night last night, slept really well, I was in that sleeping bag for like 12 hours, um, had a bit of an odd dream where me and my wife were on this game show and the game show host was a woman who looked a bit familiar but she got annoyed when everybody tried to keep guessing who her father was and then she had a brother who was like co-host and he kept changing his hairstyle but he was actually bald and when I pointed this out to him he said, takes one to no one bro, um, anyway the the peak of the game show was a, a free-form dancing challenge in a school hall and the, the song was about pies you had to dance to and the chorus was good pies, lovely pies and you had to you know, dance around to it and then I got woke up at that point by, it must have been about three in the morning and something prodding my sleeping bag both the lads went in the bunks asleep and something was prodding my sleeping bag starting on my feet end and getting closer and closer to my head and occasionally pulling the sleeping bag as well and I opened my eyes and it was pitch black, I couldn't see a thing. I mean, the logical explanation was that it was Maisie, it was Sean's dog. But I couldn't hear our paws or our clothes sort of click clacking on the floor, but it, it had to be the dog. And I have to say, I was that tired, if it had to be the ghost, I honestly didn't give a monkeys. I just, uh, just went back to sleep. Anyway, um, on to uh, Over Four Hope this morning. I hope I find it as, uh, as good as this, Bothy. This has been great. We've just crossed the drift head again, but we're gonna cruise at the monkey stream because in uh, certainly in March when you put your foot in it, it's ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. Well, we're well on the way to over four hole Bothy now. And judging by the cars that were parked where we were, it's, uh, it could be pretty full. So we've all got with tents. But I've full on, I've also wanted to come here because I think it's the only Bothy uh, in about 100 Bothies that the Mountain Bothies Association actually owns. So it's unique in that respect. But it's very, very accessible from where we've parked. It's only a mile walk along this big wide track. 
So let's see what it's like, yeah? Maybe. Hi folks, as it happens the, the bothy is empty at the minute so let's have a quick look around before it fills up. Salt there on the door there. It's even got like a little porch area. Over four hub bothy. So the left hand room, very luxurious. A little table there. It's got a, what a range here. Down and stove. And someone's been kind enough to leave a bit of wood, although here's the kicker, we've left the axe in the car. The shelf full of the inevitable bothy supplies and that. Yeah, a few elastoplasts and whatnot, salt and pepper, some playing cards, some matches, a bit of foil, and a naturally empty bottle of vodka. And this looks like a little good food preparation area. But look at this, it's got proper leather sofas in. That's great. And the little room through here, it's got an enormous sleeping platform, which looks big enough for about eight folk or even more if you're friendly. And actually, if you're desperate, nah, I wouldn't sleep under there. You'll meet the bothy mice. And a little table at the end. When we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. John Muir. I'll ponder on that tonight. I'll come back, heart. The Banks family was here. Paper soap, well, that could be handy. And there's a little room here which is Big enough for two people to sleep if you like each other. Maybe this is the lovers' room where the couples sleep, and someone's left a bit of cup of soup. What, what flavour is it? Cream of vegetable. Cream of vegetable. Nah, well, I prefer tomato. But thanks. Nice thought. Cool little buffy, yes. But I tell you what, this Bothy has real facilities. Have a look in this little outhouse here. Connected to a water butt. It's got a composting toilet. And I've never seen anything like this in a Bothy mind. How good is that? Isn't that amazing? I've never seen a toilet as good as this in a bothy. And uh, you flush it by, well, just pouring that bucket of water down after yourself and we'll fill it up with water from the burn if, we're, if we use it, but. This is the old tree here that was carved into a seat because it was deemed to be causing structural problems to the bothy or potential future structural problems. So I might sit on there and have a, a little sip of whiskey the night. And over here, I think this is probably rhubarb. I found this in a few bothies and I think it's just a, a reminder that people used to live here and grow things here and it's a, a remnant of times past when people grew from the gardens and lived in the bothy. There's a bit of information about the history of this bothy on, on the Mountain Bothies Association website itself. It's believed to be the home of William Laidlow who married his wife Bessie Scott in the uh, early 18th century. Uh, he was known as Willa Thorpe. And he was, uh, sounds like he was a right character because he was a shepherd, storyteller, athlete, drinker and uh, apparently once when he hadn't come prepared for a race he lost his trousers and won the race uh, without them. And I hard to imagine how that came about. But apparently he drank smuggled brandy rather than whiskey and he was the last person in this district to talk to fairies. So he must be quite a character by the sounds of it. And uh, two of his descendants, James Hogg and Alice Munro, uh, became internationally renowned writers. Uh, and James Hogg later described 
this area is one of the most lonely and dismal situations that ever was the dwelling of human creatures. So it must have been quite nice back in the day. I'm at the point where a little super noodle seems like a really good idea. So I've got one in my bowl here, but I'm going to supplement it with some mushrooms. If I cut them thinly enough, they should cook enough in the, in the, in the boiling water. And I've got a chilli. I'll slice a few of these into it as well. And lastly, I've got a bit of uh, fueta, which is uh, apparently it's air dried Catalan sausage uh, encased in uh, pig intestine and then uh, has an edible mould on the outside. So, um, sounds pretty good. So I'll shave a few thin slices of this and pop it in meat super noodle thing as well. All right, let's leave that for five and see what this uh, noodle bowl turns into. It doesn't look too bad. I also love reading the Bothy book and there's some proper artistry in this one. So reading the Bothy book it says there's a geocache hidden somewhere at over four hope so I'm gonna have a look for it. And I found it. It was a, a little postcard of a couple rowing a boat and a little mini torch. Uh, I'm gonna to put it back. Um, I'm not gonna say exactly where I found it but if you're up here have a look in the Bothy book and it'll give you a clue where to search for it. We've been processing a, a fair bit of wood so there's enough for tonight and probably the next couple of nights before come in to be honest. Job well done but to be fair it's mainly Nick that's done it. Because he did, in fact, have to walk back to the car to get a saw and an axe before he could do it. Hi folks, so we're, we're, we're not alone, we're sharing the both of the night. We've met a couple of canny lads, uh, Blair and Chris, from the Highlands and uh, Edinburgh respectively. And we'll share a bit of uh, whiskey with them the night. How Chris? are we doing guys? All good? Alright, all good? Thanks lads. Well, that's me in bed, folks. I'm going to have a fine little whiskey from the the holy hand grenade. And I'll see you folks in the morning. The sleeping bags are starting to smell like the inside of Boba Fett's helmet, so just give them a bit of air off in front of the fire before I set off this morning. So we're on the route of the Southern Upland Way now, and we've got about four miles to go till we get to Brattleburn Buthy. Now I've never been to the Buthy before, but I've been reading it's got attic space you can sleep in, and I kind of like the sound of that. Funny little walking so far on a good grass track and it's got mixed pine, alder and birch woodland to the left there. I like this walk at the moment. We're still on the Southern Upland Way just past uh, near Revox Bunk House. It's just over there and 
uh, just tackling a little steep bit. I hope it's short but steep. There's a few trees across the trail here, but they don't look too bad. Sean's bigger than me, he's getting through. Yeah, all right, he's caught. Whereabouts? You free? can see the Forestry Commission at work down there um, maybe you can hear them as well looks like they're ploughing furrows in the brush to plant new growth we've just spotted the video guys it's uh, it's just over there and uh, that's a welcome sight uh, we haven't come far just four or five miles but uh, we've been looking at a bag of logs each and uh, up and down and uh, glad to catch sight of the place Well, let's have a little look around the bothy via blanket, and this is the, the left-hand room. Got a nice solid looking stove there, and I like this uh, tree trunk utensil stand. That's cool, and the table, and there's some sleeping platforms there. Great. Nice little desk here, that's in it. Mm. Nothing. hot water bottle I guess that can be pretty handy and uh, I think it's a billiard ball in the bothy book and an empty pot noodle cup oh, that's handy in the right hand room it's got another stove little doweling stove by the looks of it that's it's, canny. It's um, jammed shut. Oh, is it? Yeah. As in bolted, meant to be shut. Oh. No, I just think it's um, that's oh. meant to come off, but it's. Yeah, we'll see if we can fix that. I guess. Mm. Might just need a wallet from behind. Aye. Mm. Yeah. Nice little bookshelves here. Always like seeing books in a bothy. The brutal art. The pleader. Blood on the thistle. Never somewhere else. Bad companions. Rough head. Another little sleeping platform here. And that, look at this table. I love what the table's made of. Look at these legs. And I'd have that in my house. More decorative tree trunks. I love that. And I believe there's an attic space as well. Let's have a look at that. Some pretty steep steps here. And then inverted. Oh yeah. Nice, clean, empty and big. I think I'll be sleeping up here tonight. Got some skylights. Oh, this is a cool buffy. It's worth the trek in. I'm absolutely starving after that walk in and it's uh, it's 20 to 4, it's long past uh, dinner time, so I'm going to have some spicy noodles, but I'm going to supplement it with a, again with a sort of sliced chilli pepper and a bit of uh, fuerta, fuerta, the air dried sausage. These are so cheap and camping meals are getting to silly expensive, sort of like 7 or 8 quid some of them. Um, so I think I'll just, uh, that's why I've tried on this trip, just using super noodles and some bits and pieces thrown in. And it hasn't been bad to be honest.
So this is the last night of our Bothy trip, a Brattleburn Bothy, and uh, we've saved a can of beer and a cigar for the very last night, so we're all going to enjoy that now. Hi folks, uh, I'm all tucked up in the attic space and uh, I've got the whole attic to myself which is great, it's nice and peaceful up here, but I've come to bed <coughs> much later than I wanted to because a local lad from Moffat came into the Bothy well after dark and I got a cracking on and honestly I've drank more whiskey than I would normally have done and I feel a bit tiddly, a bit tiddly winks. So I probably shouldn't even be recording this. I don't know how much sense I'm going to make. But anyway, I'm just above the lads downstairs. And I can hear I'm still cracking on. And um, it's absolutely freezing up here. Compared to the bleeds we had going with the stove downstairs. But I've got my winter bag. And uh, I think I'm going to be alright. So I hope I sleep well. So good night. And I'll see you in the morning. It's hoying down out there. I can't really complain about the weather because this is the fourth day of the trip. It's Thursday and we've been out since Monday and it's the only time it's rained during the day. It's the first time I've used my rain jacket. After four days I've eaten nothing but noodles and ration packs. Even at McDonald's and I haven't had one for years. It's starting to sound quite appealing. Carlisle McDonald's. 